So, welcome back to Close to Broke. My name is Karen, and today we have two full tables of action going here at the old Lucky Lady Casino. Public game is going, but as opposed to the smaller games that we've been playing, this game is 2 5 10. It's actually kind of big. Um, we just move over to the second table. I don't think there was any hands of notes on the first hand. So, let's get into the session. Let's have some fun. Let's get into today's episode. It's going to be a blast. I just want to start off by saying I'm so excited to have everyone here today. Today's episode has everything you want from a session. The ups, the downs, the happiness, every single thing that you want to see in a poker vlog is in today's session. So get ready for a swingy one and some with some pretty ridiculously large pots, especially for the size of the game. In this very first hand, we're already getting in the mix of things when early position raises to $15. Button goes ahead and makes a call here. I'm in the small blind and we look down at Queen Jack off. From the blinds, a hand like this probably plays best as a fold if I'm being quite fair, but we're in a game to give some action, so I go ahead and make the call. The big blind comes along as well, who's definitely one of the action players. And we're going to a flop here that comes Queen at seven, deuce with two clubs and a diamond. At this point, the action ends up checking through, which is a little interesting, and even more interesting when the turn card comes a seven of diamonds for two reasons. It brings a backdoor flush and it also pairs a second card. I do consider leading out on this turn card here, but then I just feel like, honestly, it's just not a turn card that I think I want to be leading out too often. I think my hand should just play as a check call. At this point, the big blind action player takes the lead of the hand and bets 45. The initial razor calls, the button folds. We have a pretty clear cut call here, and we're going off to a river card that comes the nine of clubs. At this point, I check it over to the opponent and the big blind decides to down bet to 20 bucks. What the heck? This is a very, very goofy hand now. This is what you call a blocker bet if I've ever seen one. A little scary, you know? We lose to queens here. King queen can definitely do this. Obviously a hand like ace queen can do this as well. But after a little bit of thinking, the initial raiser decides to call and then the big blind just mucks. Just snap mucks. Uh, this is kind of awkward. Obviously, my hand is easily able to be seen right now, but since he's in seat one and I'm in seat seven or eight, I guess, it's a little hard to see that I'm in the hand, but yeah, I don't know what the perfect thing to do is here, but considering that I've just got to play the ball where it lies and the situation has presented itself as it is, we have a pretty easy call now. Our opponent in the initial razor spot can definitely have a hand like Jack's, Queen 10 suited, Queen 9 suited. I think all those hands are very credible. Obviously, our opponent could still have a hand like aces, kings as well. But yeah, we still beat some of the hero calls that our opponent can have here. So I just flick it in. Like, we don't even have to be right all that often. And even less so when we know the big blind already is mucking his hand. It's not good. He obviously was bluffing. Uh, all that is for naught after the king. The initial razor shows king is seven offsuit. So we end up losing that hand there. But I don't know. Interesting situation, like I said, that developed on the river. I'm interested to hear your takes. Okay, getting all that weirdness out of the way in the first hand, we've got another spot where we play against a friendly face and someone you all know, Miss Margot Brooke. I raised to $15 next to act calls, a small blind calls, and then Margot from the big blind decides to call as well. We're going off to a flop that is actually pretty decent for King Jack offsuit, albeit not making a pair, Queen 10-5. Flopping a backdoor second nut flush draw on an open ender. It's going to be hard to take my hand away from me. I go in C bet for 40 bucks. Going a little bit larger, I know, but with a hand like this, why the hell not bloat the size of the pot? If we get there, it could be a big one. Next to act folds, a small blind folds as well, and then Margo decides to raise to 100. Okay, got to be a little bit cautious here. Obviously, Margo's not going to be going crazy or berserk, as even though she's definitely privy to showing some crazy seven deuce bluffs, the St. Max Payne Monday. There's no $200 bounty for that. So I'm going to proceed with caution, and I've definitely got to at least peel one off here as we're drawing to the nuts. I make the call, and the turn card is a pretty dreaded one as it pairs aboard 10 of diamonds. Now my draw goes from really sick to pretty whack. If our opponent definitely had a hand like Ace-10 or 10-9 suited and was making a play at the pot, we are now drawing stone dead. Luckily for us, when the opponent checks, we have a pretty easy check back. All that to be said, the river card comes the four of diamonds. It doesn't change anything, and at this point, Margo decides to bet for the same amount of $100. Our 
I consider for a brief second calling here with my hand as there's a small chance she could be making a move here with a hand like Jack-9 or King-Jack, which I'm either chopping against or still beating with King-High. But all that being said, having the King of Spades is probably not that great. If my opponent happened to be bluff check raising the flop, I'd expect them to contain either the Ace or the King of Spades. So, uh, I hate folding. I know it's only King-High, but gotta give Margot credit where credit is due. I go ahead and make the fold here, but we'll never know what she had. Just a quick interruption for all you lovely folks. I will be on the Husser Casino live stream this Thursday, or in a couple days, you get what I'm saying, May 11th. Kind of a big deal for me, at least. Uh, don't get an opportunity to do this too often, so I'd appreciate if you guys come out and show some love and support. If you happen to be a channel member, which it's not too late to join, I'm going to be giving away a 1% of myself on the stream, as far as it pertains to wins. If you guys want to get in there, you know, and not be a square, of course, yeah, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy that. That'll be a very special on the 200th episode of the vlog. So, I'll Outside of that, not much more to talk about. Enjoy the rest of this session. Let's get back to the shenanigans. This next hand, we have a pretty fun bump pop. Okay. Just before we get into that, funny thing to note for y'all. We actually host this game every single Sunday at the Lucky Lady. Today, we had two games, a 2-3 and a 2-5 game going. It was a bunch of fun, if I do say so myself. And there's a bounty going out right now. So every single Sunday until the bounty is met, I will be offering a $500 giveaway if we ever get to three tables concurrent. So... We've got two tables. If we get a third table, the bounty burst, and I will give away $500 to the players that come. I don't know. We'll figure out a way. We'll do like high hands or something like that, and I'll just give the money away. But anyways, back to the bomb pot at hand. $10 from each player, $80 in total as we're going eight ways off to a flop. That comes king 7-7 seven, seven on one board and queen 9-6 on the other board. There's a flusher on both boards here, which is something to be worried about. But with the action... Checked over to the early position better. He decides to lead off for pot for 80 bucks. Next to act calls and then the action folds to me on the button. We look down at a pretty nice hand here. We have trip sevens with an ace kicker, top pair, top kicker on the other board, as well as blocking the diamond draw. Well, I don't know how much blocking the diamond draw is really that prevalent, but I think we have a pretty clear spot to go for a raise here. I think our hand plays best as a heads up play. I'd hate to go three or four ways off to a turn card with just trips and top top getting it heads up against the hand like maybe i decide to pot it for 400 looking to go heads up the small blind early position limper decides to go all in having me covered and then the early position two caller just decides to fold i make the call for all in which ends up leading us to about a 2500 dollar pot with a run out to still to come on the top board we get the turn card that comes out the eight of spades and at this point, my opponent reveals his hand, king, seven, ten, four. So he has a ten, seven of diamonds for a diamond draw on the bottom board that I have not only top pair, top kicker, but I block his diamonds, but he's also drawing live with the gutter ball. Ooh, a little bit to be worried about. And on the other board, as you guys can see, I'm in rough shape as he flopped a boat. We're not dead, though. We do have our ace that is live. At this point, the turn card on the second board comes out the eight of hearts oh man that sucks well there was not very many eights left in the deck i can tell you that much either way we're going off to river card on both boards looking to get lucky the top board brings us no luck as it comes in nine of clubs and once again it looks like we're playing copycat as the bottom board matches it with the nine of spades unfortunate one for us there the bomb pot not going in my direction but hey that's just how these go sometimes here we are back to the game we know and love, No Limit Hold'em, and here we are back to some fun passive play. There's three limps when it gets to me in the big blind. We look down at an ace. I think we have a pretty easy spot to just check back. Don't want to bloat this pile with a crummy ace. So we're going off to a flop four ways. It comes out ace, nine, six with two hearts and a club. There we go. Flop and top pair. Seems like it's been a little while since I've seen a hand this pretty. I check it over and it ends up getting checked over to the second early position limper who decides to bet off for 20. Oddly enough, everyone makes a call here, still four ways off to a turn card that is even better than the flop as it comes the ace of spades. We now make trips here on a really, really fun board. And more than all of that, we're really disguised right now. I don't think many people will be expecting me to have an ace here from the big blind. But, of course, we got to be a little cautious. There's still a chance for somebody else to have an ace, albeit very unlikely. But I think we have a pretty clear spot to either check raise or check evaluate. So when I check it over to my opponents, oddly enough, everyone checks it back. 
Looks like we're going to need to see a river card for free, and a river card comes out. And let me tell you, bing, it is spades. That is a really nice card. Nice for many reasons, specifically the one that now I have the effect of nuts. I lead off for 200. Early position tanks forever, and then decides to fold what he would later say was a nine. So obviously our big bet here, doing what it's supposed to do and getting people to think about it with some pretty bad hands. Early position two folds, and then the button goes into the tank. The button is a really good friend of ours and a friend of the vlog, Mr. Julian. He is thinking about it before he shows his hand 10-7 of hearts. Flops a gutter ball and a flush draw there. He smells something funny, but unfortunately for him, no matter how bad the stench of the boat is, he's in love with the barnacles. As he decides to throw in the call here, we show him the bad news, and surprisingly, like I said, props to him for even thinking about it. This next hand is a really fun one and not something I do very often as we're going to be playing a hand for my opponent's POV. Not because I'm one of the villains, but I just think it's a ton of fun. I decided to splash this pot for 175 so I don't get a hand dealt in. I just put $175 in the middle and let my opponents wreak havoc on this next one. At this point, it folds to Margot, who now looks down at her hand. He's king. Woo, that's a good hand and... Even better so when there's like almost $200 sitting in the middle for free. She just open rips it for 365 bucks, which is obviously what you want to do here with all this free money. Don't want to give somebody the opportunity of making a play at you. One and two, we've got to get these smaller pairs to obviously fold. Deuces, threes, fours, five, sixes. Hands that are obviously technically ahead of us. We want to get them out of the way. All of that to be said, the action folds over to the big blind who is Mr. JD, somebody new to this game. Every single Sunday we run it, first time we've seen him, and he is here ready to gamble and be an absolute sicko. He blind calls all in there for 365 bucks, and they're running this board out twice. Neither player knows what the other has here, but luckily for us, we have a fair sweat for our viewers here at home. They decide to run out the board twice here. On the first board, we have a massive sweat as it comes out 9-3 deuce with two clubs. Ace high is technically ahead, but if you guys run the mathematics here, it's a really, really close spot. The turn card comes out in nine of spades, increasing the probability of ace king high to win. And the river card comes a queen of diamonds. So a big win there for Margot. She's guaranteed at least half the pot. We're going off to a second board here, and the flop comes out king six three, flopping top pair. But she's not out of the woods yet. She's got a fade of jack or a six. The turn's an eight of diamonds, and the river is a three of spades. Margo takes down a massive pot there, getting her back to even after a tough session. Very fun one to sweat it out here. A lot of fun things happen in these Sunday games, as I promised many a time before. Okay, after a quick break from the bomb pots, we're back in the mix. Although we lost that first one around, I'm feeling good about this, baby. Let's go for it. Once again, there's like nine different people. We're going $90 in this pot to a flop. It comes out queen, jack, three on the top board. And on the bottom board, it comes out eight, five, deuce with two clubs. At this point, the action is checked to the button, who decides to bid out for the pot, going $90. The action's folded over here to the middle position player, who decides to call. I'm just to the left of this player, and we finally look down at our hand, and we've got a freaking monster. 10, 9, 9, 7. So we flop ourselves a gutter ball on one ball on one board, as well as a flush draw, and on the other board, we flop the open ender to the nuts. Okay, we like the sound of that. We have a pretty easy call here. We're going off to a turn card as we're drawing to the nuts, so why not have more people in the party? And the turn card on the top board, it comes out the seven of clubs, not improving us. And on the bottom board, it comes out the 10 of spades. So now we have ourselves top pair, a flush draw, an open ender. On the bottom board and on the top board, we're still drawing to the nuts here with this nut straight draw. Yeah, quite a few outs. At this point, the action checks to the button, and once again, he throws out a C-bet or a double barrel for 300. At this point, middle position folds, and with the action back on me, I think at this point, a raise is fine. Getting the money in the middle seems like a good option. If my cards come on the river, there's a chance my opponent doesn't even pay me off. But in real time, I just feel like my opponent is going to be more than likely to play this a little more cautiously. I don't want him to make any big folds at this point. Even if we get him to fold a hand that we're technically behind, 
we're just really close in equities here. At least I think I am against his range. It's just hard to tell. We're playing double board PLO bomb pod. Why the hell not just call? Flick it in. We're going out to river card that on the top board gives us the nut straight. Eight of spades on the bottom board. I mean, uh, I must have been really good. Santa Claus has come early. Christmas here in spring. The Jack of Diamonds. We make the nut straight on the top board and the second nut straight on the bottom board. I mean, this is what dreams are made of. I mean, quite frankly. At this point, I'm in between a rock and a hard place. Except the hard place is rather soft. I can either check it to my opponent and play this trappy or just try to go for a pot size bet here on the river. The only problem is if I bet for pot, I actually won't be able to put my opponent all in here. And there's a small chance he either saves that money behind, one, or two, I just think that the old check jam is kind of nasty. I mean, getting my opponent to commit more of his stack here maybe will make him more likely to call off than if I just open pot it, as that looks really strong as this river cards are really, really good for me and probably not that great for him. All that to be said, I check it over to him and he bets out for 200. Everything's going as planned here. I decide to go all in jamming for about $1,000. Our opponent Jay thinks about it for a second before saying, you know, he almost checked it back, but his hand's way too good to ever fold and he decides to make the call. We show our hand and we are in fact good. It was really unfortunate as Jay had pocket jack, so he had a set on both boards and he even had a 10 to block the nut straight on the top board. Unlucky for him there, but this $3,000 pot is coming in my direction. This is a miracle, miracle comeback here. We were into this game for 2,500 and we were somehow back in black, baby. Seems like things are gonna continue on this road as i'm in the straddle under the gun limps small blind limps big blind folds and i'm in the straddle and we look down at ace queen off great spot to squeeze and even better that i actually have a real hand to do it with i make it 50 bones both players make the call we're going three ways off to a flop slightly out of position to one of the players that's great ace seven four flop in top pair good kicker on a pretty wet board texture I throw out a pretty chunky C bet, or at least I try to. I make it 65. In reality, probably being slightly bigger is probably best. Although there is not a whole lot of correlation with the seven or the four, I'm not gonna have a whole lot of that in my range. Definitely sevens of four are gonna be in my opponent's ranges here as they limped. I mean, we can still get called, as we said, by going bigger against flush draws, some random straight draws like five, six suited, and all worse aces. Well, it won't come to it as the under the gun limper decides to raise it to 165. The other player folds. We have a clear cut call and the turn card comes a beautiful queen of clubs. If we were somehow behind a hand like ace four, ace seven suited, we've not caught up pretty quickly. I decide to check it over to my opponent who decides to throw out a bet of 250, leaving himself about 700 behind. I think that we have no other option besides getting the money in the middle. If we can cool off our opponent, if he has a hand, like we said, like an inferior two pair, or if he happens to have a combo draw, like a straight draw and a flush draw, it's best to get the money in now while the money getting is good. If the river comes out a seven or a random spade or something like that, there's just a great chance that the action is just totally frozen here. And what I mean by that is, if my opponent happens to have a flush draw or a straight draw, or he has a seven or ace four, and the river card is like a king of spades, there's just no chance that any more money gets in on into the to the river. I'm probably gonna have to check and he will have to check as well. But if I put the money in here on the turn, although it looks scary as we got raised on the flop and it's hard for people to have a bunch of bluffs here, like I said, we can still get called by worse value hands, all the other two pairs, and we can still get called by all the drawing hands. All that to be said, our opponent thinks about it for a second before deciding to fold. So obviously our opponent was trying to pull a quick one on us there, but luckily for us, we were able to catch him and we win yet another sizable pot. Today's session continues to be fruitful and this next hand, no, no different. As under the gun limps, the next player, Mr. Connor, decides to isolate to 20. The player to directly to his left, Mr. Johnny, decides to 3-bet to 95. All this action in front of me, and like I said, I wasn't kidding. Things are going great. We look down at pocket queens here. The ladies, clear-cut spot to go ahead and 4-bet, although it's scary to 4-bet a hand like queens. I mean, what the hell are we doing? We're in a fun game. We're given a ton of action, so it's time to now give action with a good hand. I make it 300. 
the action folds back to the initial raiser, or excuse me, the action folds back to the big blind, who has about 250 left in the stack. Shout out to Mr. Supreme LA Poker. You guys have seen him on Max Payne Money as well. He decides to just gamble it up and throw his 250 in the middle. The action folded back over to the initial raiser or isolator. He decides out of nowhere to five bet warm five bet jam for 770 oof that's not very good but considering it's like 400 dollars more for me to call i mean this seems like a pretty easy spot to go and put it in well it won't come to that not just yet because the action is now six bet six bets pre-flop what the hell is going on the action is over back to the hijack who, as we said, six bet all in jams for $1,240. Well, like I said, we've been trying to get a bunch of action here and somehow we have a good hand. The live read I have on the hijack is that he does not have a pair. After the way he had a long pause, a genuine long pause of not knowing what to do, the genuine uncertainty, it felt like to me that my opponent didn't have a hand like kings or aces. That leaves a hand like Jacks and Ace King, and if those are the only two hands, it's kind of like a flip here. The only trouble is we still have to worry about two other players. Sure, one may be gambling, but the other player, I mean, he hasn't shown any complete ability to get significantly out of line. Ugh, I'm not in the business of making big folds pre-flop, but man, let me know in the comment section what you guys would do. Uh, after quite some thinking, I go against my regular judgment and i decide to make a pretty disciplined lay down folding pocket queens but i won't leave you guys hanging here we've got to know what the hell happens the players decide to run out one board here and the middle position player shows pocket kings wow and the hijack shows ace king so like we said one of the hands that we were somehow ahead of main pot's a thousand side pot's a thousand and the potential second side pot would have been also a thousand so Luckily for us, we were to get away from it there from a massive, massive roller coaster hand and a massive cooler. It could have been a train wreck. The runout comes out jack high, ends up pairing the jack, and the river card is a six. We ended up dodging a massive, massive bullet there. And once again, as Phil Helmuth coined it best, I dodge bullets, baby. We would not be complete without having a ridiculously massive pot. Don't want to give too much away, so let's hop into it. Once again, we're playing a bomb pot, the third one of note for the day. That means, yeah, things are probably going good or really bad for us. $90 going to the middle here. We're going off to two flops that come out 9, 8, 3 with two spades. On the bottom board, it comes out king 4, 4. Early position bets 50, middle position calls 50, and then the cutoff raises to 240. At this point, I'm on the button and I finally look down at my hand and oh my goodness. We have king, queen, 10, 4. We flop a boat, which is the second nuts on one board, and we flop ourselves a gutter ball to the nuts on the other board. Any jack would give us the stone cold nuts. And we also have quite a bit of backdoor equity by the way of flush draws on both boards. Woo, this is a this is a pretty good spot for us. And although there is quite a bit of action in front of me, I think the only play here is to pot it. I don't want to go like 15 ways off to the turn card here. At least that's what I think in real time. I don't have any strategy for these bomb pots. I just think it's a good idea to get people to fold. But I think in this specific spot, maybe making it a smaller four bet of like four or 500 makes the most sense. You want to get more people in here when you have one of the boards locked up and you're, you know, don't have anything on the other board. It's different. You know, we got it. We were trying to chop multiple people's money here, not just one person chopped. Either way, I make it pot for 930. Early position decides to fold or actually call all in for about 200, excuse me. And then the action folds over to the cutoff who decides to just jam it all in here for 2500. I have him covered. This is the easiest call of my life. If it's a cooler, so be it. At least we're not drawing stone dead on the other board. At this point, my opponent flips over his hand. He has 8874. So he also has trips, but he's drawing nearly dead here to one out. On the other board, he has a set. So we still are drawing live here for a $5,000 side pot and an $800 main pot. 
Oh my goodness, will the poker gods bestow the right upon me to ship another ridiculously massive bomb pot. The turn card on the top board comes out to five of spades, and on the bottom it comes to seven of clubs. And on the river card, on the top card, looking for a jack. Oh, it comes a four of hearts. And on the bottom board, it comes out the three of diamonds. We end up chopping a ridiculous pot here, but, you know, happy to take it down nonetheless. A big pot coming my way. Even after chopping it, we'll take it, baby. A massive session. This ended up becoming a really, really big game somehow. Let's start over to me and post and see how the hell we feel. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. It's too, it's too easy. Okay, so what a crazy day uh to be quite honest i did not properly film an outro for this episode here we are back home after getting all of that craziness out of me and my oh my what the heck just happened well 2-5 game here the public game on sundays 1 p.m at the lucky lady ended up being quite uh quite it was crazy i mean i don't know how else to say it huge shout out to everyone that joined especially uh, margo uh got a lot of love uh for everyone that came down and then obviously having a fellow content creator and a fellow person in the space come down like that is, is really cool so from what i understand she plans on coming down pretty frequently so if you guys want to play with any of us you guys know where to find us outside of that i think we were into the game for a total of twenty five hundred dollars and out for a grand total of forty five hundred mm, i don't want to be the kind of person that uh thinks a little too far ahead of myself but man i smell here and it's coming pretty gosh darn quick i think we won like nine out of our ten last ten sessions we'll take we'll take that baby you guys know where to find me every sunday i'll be live streaming every sunday as well if you guys want to see me on felt you guys know where to find me if this episode hasn't aired it might be literally airing tonight I'll be playing on the Hustler live stream Thursday, which I believe is today. You get what I'm saying. We'll be playing May 11th, Thursday night on the Hustler live stream. So if you guys want to stop by, it mean a lot to me if you guys just went on there and just kind of wished us some run good and let the people of the Hustler Casino live stream know that we are happy and thankful that we're in the game. Super excited for the future, the WSOP, all of the positive things in our future. Outside of that, not a whole lot more to talk about. You guys want to find me. Stay happy, stay healthy, more importantly, y'all. Run good at the tables. Deuces. Yeah. That's why I gotta watch my demeanor. My demeanor. You know they lacking up blacks and Latinos. Yeah. It's the same old game, ain't nothing.